it might look like prima bolin, it might smell like prima bolin, but it's not prima bolin. It's margarine <laughs> or something else. Welcome to Vigorous Performance Enhancing Drugs. I'm Coach Steve, and in this video, we'll discuss my second favorite anabolic androgenic steroid. The first favorite being testosterone, which is the base and the foundation of most of the performance enhancing drug cycles that enhanced bodybuilder, strength athletes, or fitness enthusiasts like to use. So, the second favorite is methanolone enantate, and as everybody knows, it's prima bolin. So, what I'll do is I'll split this video up, the Prima Bolin profile, I'll split it up into several different videos because, um, well, audience retention issues. So every video is going to be a little bit shorter, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, unless I ramble, it will be 30 minutes again. So let's start with the history and the status of uh, Prima Bolin pharmaceuticals. So we'll have to rewind the clock a little bit, going back to 1962 when Squibb, introduced methanolone enantate and methanolone acetate to the medical field. Back then, Squibb produced injectable methanolone enantate under the brand name Nibol Depot, with Depot referring to the Prima Bolin Reservoir, which remains behind in the body for several days following an intramuscular injection. Squibb also produced methanolone acetate in oral form as tablets under the name Nibol. And both compounds, or both versions of methanolone, were FDA approved in the treatment of anemia in cases of bone marrow failure. Methanolone also used to be prescribed in the treatment of osteoporosis, muscle wasting diseases, and sarcopenia, which is a muscle wasting condition due to immobilization. HIV, for example, is a muscle wasting disease, and a spinal fracture often results in sarcopenia because you're not allowed to move for weeks to months on end, depending on the severity of the spinal fracture. So in those cases, methanolone enantate or methanolone acetate used to be prescribed, but it's largely been replaced by other compounds which have less androgenic anabolic side effects compared to prima bolin. Erythropoietin EPO has largely replaced methanolone in the treatment of anemia due to bone marrow failure because EPO doesn't have any of the anabolic or androgenic side effects which are associated with prima bolin, nor does it alter lipid levels, which prima bolin or any other anabolic androgenic steroid does. Oxymetolone, anadrol, is still prescribed in cases of anemia, so not exactly sure why methanolone was discontinued in most countries in the treatment of anemia, but anadrol is still preferred. Now, we look at osteoporosis that has largely been replaced by selective estrogen receptor modulators. Muscle wasting diseases like HIV, they still prescribe anabolic steroids, namely Anivar, Winstrol, maybe Nandrolone in cases of sarcopenia. The treatments for these medical conditions that methanolone, enantate, or acetate used to be approved for have largely been replaced by other kinds of medications. And I think as of now, as of 2020, methanolone enantate is still FDA approved in the treatment of anemia due to bone marrow failure only in Turkey and Spain. And that brings us to the second and only manufacturer of FDA approved Prima Bolin, Bayer. Now Bayer used to be Shearing and Bayer. They fused in 2006, which is the same year that Jay Cutler won the Mr. Olympia. In 2006, Shearing and Bayer fused, but Shearing acquired the license to produce methanolone enantate and methanolone acetate from Squibb somewhere in the late 1960s. After they transferred the license, Squibb stopped manufacturing methanolone enantate and methanolone acetate, so Nibol and Nibol Depot is no longer in the market since the late 1960s. After that, the FDA approval in the United States was retracted. After the acquisition, Sharing Germany rebranded injectable methanolone enantate into Prima Bolin Depot, and oral methanolone acetate was rebranded into Prima Bolin. But for a short period of time, up until the early 1990s, I believe, Sharing also produced injectable methanolone acetate, and I can't for the life of me find what the brand name was called. So I'm going to speculate and call it Prima Bolin Depot Rapid, which seems to be quite common in the medical field, putting a rapid behind it. 
because of course the acetate ester has a reasonably short half-life of only three to five days while the enantate ester has a half-life of 10 to 12 days which is two to three times longer compared to acetate so feel that prima ball and depot rapid it could have been a suitable brand name or maybe maybe prima ball and r just like Humalin r novelin r prima ball and r sounds catchy if you're old enough to have actually used injectable methanolon acetate produced by sharing before it got discontinued in the late 1990s please let me know what the actual brand name was because for the life of me i can't find it on google let me know if you ever tried it yourself so pharmaceutical grade injectable methanolon acetate hasn't been around for over 20 years but some of the underground labs might still carry injectable methanolon acetate i can tell you from first-hand experience i've tried injectable methanolon acetate twice in my life and I didn't make it to the end of the vial because the post-injection pain of methanolon acetate is um, legendary <laughs> and I would almost compare it to testosterone suspension or winstrol suspension so I would prefer personally and what I recommend to most of my clients methanolon enantate preferably FDA approved Bayer Rimabolin I would always choose with that option if you're going with the injectable route because methanolon acetate is uh, post-injection pain galore. Now, methanolon acetate used to be available as tablet form as well. Again, after the merger of sharing with Bayer, I believe they discontinued the production of methanolon acetate tablets as well. You might still be able to source methanolon acetate tablets on the underground scene, just like injectable methanolon acetate is still available, although the tablets are probably easier sourced compared to injectable version, probably because of the post-injection pain and the lack of popularity. Now, I feel that there's no practical application for the methanolon acetate tablets. They, you know, inexperienced coaches often recommend it to women. I feel that Anavar is a much superior compound if women decide to use some sort of performance enhancing drug. When you look at the anabolic to androgenic rating and compare Primabolin to Anavar, you'll see that Anavar has a much lower amount of androgenicity compared to Primabolin. And that's of course highly desired when you're a woman because the androgenicity of anabolic steroids usually result in the most amount of masculinization and I'm going to assume that most women try to avoid any kind of masculinization. So if you want to use Prima Bone as a woman, short durations only and reduced amounts. And I feel that Anavar is a much superior compound during contest prep for longer periods of time. Prima Bolin has an anabolic rating of 88 with an androgenic rating of 24 to 40, which is about two to four times lower compared to the anabolic rating. But when you look at Anavar, Anavar has an anabolic rating of 322 to 630 with an androgenic rating of only 24, which is 13 to 26 times lower compared to its anabolic rating. So differentiation between anabolism and androgenicity with Anavar is much greater. And that's why I feel that it's preferred for women over Primobol and acetate tablets, especially if you're considering 25 milligrams methanolone acetate tablets per day, look into 2.5 to 5 milligrams of Anavar instead, you'll get comparable amounts of anabolism, but almost negligible amounts of androgenicity just to keep something into consideration for the small amount of women that are watching this channel but i know a lot of the guys might consider putting their girlfriends on methanolon acetate or anavar i would lean towards anavar 100 times out of 100 times I i've never <laughs> recommended methanolon acetate to a woman ever but i have recommended injectable methanolon enantate to top level female competitors that compete in the figure class or the athletic physique class never to bikini girls please bikini girls don't take methanolon acetate or methanolon enantate regardless of what level of competition you compete in for the figure athletic physique class, yes, I would recommend maybe 20 to 25 milligrams methanolon enantate three times per week for the last six weeks. So when the competitor is already in shape, you don't need so much Prima Bolin per week. So that's 60, 75 milligrams of Prima Bolin per week. Again, these girls are maybe 55, 60 kilos on stage. And when you're shredded, 
and that small body weight, you really don't need much to look absolutely phenomenal. Now for the guys, 60 to 75 milligrams per week, it's probably not going to make a dent, especially if you're twice the size of a female competitor. So if you're 100 kilos, 110 kilos, 130 kilo freak, in those cases, prima bone dosing is going to be a little bit higher, but we'll discuss that in the dosing and practical application video, which we'll release in a couple of days from now. So basically, the only methanolone that I recommend to clients, whether that's men or women, is methanolone anatate in the form of pharmaceutical grade Bayer Remabolin. I tell all my clients, if you want to run Primo, do your best to source pharmaceutical grade. You know, the underground route, yes, you might get Primabolin, but it might not be 100% accurately dosed. Even if it's accurately dosed, sterility might be an issue because it doesn't pass the scrutinous testing that a real and true and tested and proven pharmaceutical grade company like Bayer goes through. But I don't think anybody has ever had an issue with Bayer Remabolin or Bayer Remabolin besides the significant financial drain because pharmaceutical grade compounds are of course not cheap unless you fly to Turkey yourself and buy it through a pharmacy there. Whatever you find on the underground market is going to be significantly marked up, especially considering most of the bodybuilders out there end up running several ampules of Bayer per week, resulting in a significant amount of financial drain or financial strain, however you want to label it. Personally, I got great results from two ampules, 200 milligrams of Primo per week. But if you're the kind of guy that needs a thousand milligrams, hey, it's your money. You get to decide how to spend it. I've run a thousand milligrams of Prima Volum per week and was it worth it? Yes, 100%. But you have to be careful for counterfeits, just like with anything, because there's only one manufacturer that produces real pharmaceutical grade Prima Volum, Bayer Prima Volum. There's counterfeits out there. Now, the latest counterfeits that I've seen came in boxes of three ampules. Recently, over the last few years, Bayer has only been producing Bayer Remabolin in single ampule boxes, and they're doing the same thing now with Testavirin. So before Testavirins, you could buy in a box of 20 ampules, but nowadays, all that I've seen is boxes of single ampules, single ampules Bayer Remabolin and single ampule Bayer Testavirin depots. So keep that in mind. So if you see somewhere an opportunity to purchase three ampules in a box of barium pollen, those are not going to be legit. Now I've had these three ampule box barium pollen counterfeits in my hands not too long ago, maybe a year or two ago. I opened the package, I looked at the carrier oil, way too liquid, I didn't even bother to check, I didn't even bother to inject. I can tell from the carrier oil if the barium pollen is legit or not. The first warning sign was three ampules in a box because Bayer removal comes in a single ampule box and the second warning sign is the carrier oil Bayer produces in castor oil if you don't know what castor oil is and why it's superior you should watch this video right here Bayer produces in castor oil about 30 percent benzobenzoate and the rest is pharmaceutical ingredient castor oil extends the half-life to match the anatate ester and make sure that serum concentrations stay reasonably stable with weekly or bi-weekly injections of testavirin or remabolins. But counterfeiters aren't able to reproduce the castor oil, benzobenzoate, benzoalcohol, and active pharmaceutical ingredient formula that Bayer uses for testavirins or remabolins. So you'll see that with counterfeits, the oil is very viscous, very liquid. It might be water, it might be ethyl oleate, propylene glycol, glycol whatever toxic synthetic carrier oil they prefer to use nowadays. It might not even have Prima Bolin. It just might, it might look like Prima Bolin. It might smell like Prima Bolin, but it's not Prima Bolin. It's margarine <laughs> or something else. You never really know. So again, be careful if you're spending your money on Bayer Prima Bolins, you know, you do your due diligence and make sure that it's legit. I honestly think that the methanolone enitate or methanolone acetate from a select few reputable underground labs is legit as well and accurately dosed. Don't ask. YouTube is not a source board, please. Even then, underground labs, you still have to keep the sterility, contaminants, heavy metals, 
carrier oil, carrier oil, carrier oil into consideration before you decide to purchase methanolone enantate or methanolone acetate, whether that's oral or injectable, if you're still interested in running that compound after watching this video. The next video will be about how primobolin affects blood work. And I'll use my blood work and the blood work of some of my clients as an example. And whether it changes the estradiol concentrations, the sex hormone binding globulin concentrations, lipid levels, or of course, increases hematocrit and red blood cell count. That will be in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next Primobolin Profile.